Hi, I'm Donna Kalner, and this is the fourth and final video in Lesson 2 of the New Age Looping Basics eCourse. This video presents a sample project that incorporates a round base, increases, and decreases. But before you start stitching, I want to talk a little bit about designing your own looping projects. You've already been designing in this course because there are no um, row by row instructions and no requirement that you conform to specific materials or to a gauge that matches mine. You've had to make choices and that's what design is all about. It's about making choices. Even if you're not consciously thinking about design, you're making design choices all the time. You make choices when you snap a photograph. You make choices in how you decorate your home or how you combine pieces from your wardrobe into an outfit. Your design choices in a looping project don't have to be carved in stone. Some of my favorite pieces are ones where I had to find a way to make a problem look intentional. In other words, when you can't fix it, feature it. Because you don't want to be ripping back 12 rows of looping. It's not like knitting a crochet. Looping will not unravel. It's an incredibly stable structure, and this is a good thing. So it helps to have a plan that incorporates design. A good habit to adopt is to pick one or two design elements or principles to guide the choices that you make in a looping project. Design elements include line, shape, form, texture, color, and value. Design principles are ways we organize and arrange those design elements. Pattern, for example, is a design principle. So are variety contrast, emphasis, scale, proportion, balance, repetition, rhythm, and unity. Other intentions get pulled into the mix as well. How do you want to use the piece? What materials are available? What color is your bathroom? Which leads us to the sample project. So let's talk about it. I found a liquid soap dispenser at the dollar store. It has a round base and a ceramic body that gets larger in diameter as you move from the base upward. I decided to make a stitched sheath that incorporates two colors of thread. I'm using 7-ply Irish waxed linen. To give the sheath some variety, I decided to change the scale of my stitches when I change thread colors. To give the piece unity, I plan to finish the top of the sheath in the same color as the bottom and to go back to the original stitch gauge. With those intentions in mind, I started the project by making a round base from a slip knot start using increases to add stitches and build the diameter of the base to match the bottom of the ceramic body of the soap dispenser. Once the base was large enough, I reoriented the work so that I could maintain my normal north to south stitching orientation. I increased when my eyes told me to. My only intention was to create the illusion of a fabric where all the stitches were about the same size at this point. In other words, I'm not counting my stitches. Now, most of the time when I'm recording things for you, I have the camera in between 
me and my work and with my bifocals that makes things interesting sometimes but this shows you how I really hold things generally when I'm stitching over a mold like this you'll want to play around with different ways of holding the work to find what's comfortable for you after the blue section was completed I was ready to change to brown thread for the next section to beef up the line element where the two colors met in addition to trapping the tail when I added the brown thread and finished off the blue thread I wrapped the brown thread a couple times all the way around the mold to give that line a little emphasis as I stitched the first row with the brown thread I trapped that wrapped thread as if it were a wrapped base cord or trapped tail and because it was my intention to add some variety by changing the scale of my stitches on the brown section I made my stitches a little bit larger than I did in the blue section as I was starting this section I had to just stop myself from making my stitches exactly the same as what I had done on the blue section when I decided that the brown section was done I switched back to the blue thread but you'll notice that I gave the piece a couple of extra wraps with the brown thread once again to make that line element stronger then I made the conscious choice to go back to the stitch density that I had used in the earlier blue section as the diameter of the piece got smaller I skipped stitches or made decreases to maintain that illusion of a, of a consistent stitch size at this point I'm closing in on the finish if you look to the right of my thumbnail you'll see where I added thread the last time around I'm going to get past that point and make a few stitches and end this piece I'll end the same way I ended the shapely sampler by making a complete wrap around the needle with the thread then drawing it through into a small knot then I can bury that tail inside trim it off and call this project done so now it's time for you to look around for some object you might use as a mold that has a round base and would require shaping with increases and decreases pick one or two design elements or principles to guide you in this project select your thread and start stitching have fun with this and I'll see you again in lesson three where we'll play with some different materials you'll learn how to start from an oval base and we'll work both with and without molds this is Donna Kalner with the New Age Looping Basics eCourse